Hi everybody, this is Howard Teaser King coming to you with Week 12's college football. Let's take a minute. Uh, you have you know, teams trying to get the six wins for their bowl games. Keep an eye on that. You have like conference championships being decided. You have the playoff being decided, which really isn't decided until the end when you get all the way to the conference championship games, and if, uh, you know, let's say Baylor runs the table, they'll go ahead of, no of Notre Dame and uh, if Oklahoma State. If one of the four runs the table in the in the Big 12, then the, they would, you know, probably get a ahead of them. The problem I have is, like, Baylor is probably one of the top two or three teams in the country, but since they haven't played anybody, even though they've won every game by 60 points, it doesn't count, and then they still have to go beat. The other, you know, TCU, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, uh, and then if they they lost, you know, the quarterback's out, they lost Oklahoma, they're down three and they lose by ten at the end, and the problem is, now they're like the tenth rated team in the country, and I'm like, okay, let's see them against any of the others, and they, they beat them all, so, it's, again, these polls make absolutely no sense, um, again, I'm still sticking with my guns as far as looking for mismatches, looking for weird point spreads. Again, looking, you know, I believe every game is a, a matchup. And I'm just looking for the right matchup where it just doesn't make sense, the right, the wrong point spread. Last week I loved Oregon getting 10 from Stanford, and I just couldn't understand that point spread. Yes, yeah, Oregon was hurt when the quarterback was out, such as Baylor is a little bit weaker with this new kid as opposed to Seth Russell but the quarterback's back and you're going to give Oregon 10 points doesn't make any sense so that's what I looked for I found it and I made that bet it was like my lock a few weeks ago I took Notre Dame was only seven and a half to pit and I cut them to one and a half and that doesn't make sense it's too small so I look at the lines and, and I kind of laugh when people say oh Vegas really knows what they're doing they look how close they are to the line and it's if they get it close, it's just a fluke because they're not, they're not trying to get it close. They're trying to get the betting even. But when you see the mismatch, then off you go. So let's talk about a few games here. Uh, we'll go with South Florida and Cincinnati tonight. Uh, again, now my, my odds are South Florida minus 7 over Cincy. South Florida killed Temple, which was shocking. They played Memphis real tight at home. They lost by a touchdown. And they've gotten better. Their quarterback is not a really good passer, but he's a good runner. Their defense seems to be okay. Um, Cincinnati's okay. They're not better than Memphis, and they're not better than Temple. Um, so I just think the wrong team's favorite here. I think South Florida should be a three-point favorite. I like South Florida getting nine. Um, I was against them last week with Temple. And I was just really surprised Temple got killed by them. They gave up 44 points. But with that being said, they can score 44 on South on Temple. They they'll score 44 on Cincinnati. I'm sure there were some returns in the game, but still, um, I think South Florida should be favored here. I, I like South Florida in the nine. Um, Maryland Lane three to Indy is an interesting one. I look at this game and I can't understand it. I mean, Indy played Michigan down to the wire, Ohio State down to the wire. They did get blown out of Michigan State because Michigan State had some long runs on them. But for the most part, they've been scoring points. they got a great running back in Howard. Quarterback's good. Um, they seem to score a lot of points. And i got a Maryland team that really... Excuse me, I've been waiting to do that. I got a Maryland team that really doesn't score a whole lot of points. So what do I do here? I mean, Maryland late three. Now Indy at home and Indy on the road are different teams, but I just think Maryland's a weak team. Uh, I think Indy, you have a, a offensive team that's going to score on Maryland here. They could easily win this game. They've been dying to win the game. They've been playing close every game against far better competition. Uh, I, I like Indy in the nine here. I think that. Uh, 
Indy will be able to easily keep up with Maryland scoring wise. And if Maryland gets out 21, Indy can easily put up a 21. You get nine with Indy, and again, I I just think that's a matchup thing where I don't think Maryland's gonna stop Indy, and I don't know that Indy can stop Maryland, but I don't think Maryland's all that good. And they played a passing team earlier in Bowling Green, and Bowling Green killed them. Uh, 49-28, Michigan State, somewhat of a passing team, beat them. Uh, so they seem to have a little trouble with their secondary. Um, so I just like, uh, I like Indy in the nine there. I think that's that's good. Uh, UMass, lane nine to Miami of Ohio. Uh, this is kind of a mismatch, too. Miami of Ohio is terrible. They're the weakest MAC team. UMass has a good quarterback in Flugel Hoppel, or whatever his name is, something like that. Um, they're laying nine. You cut it to three. UMass is at home. Miami of Ohio is terrible. I can't see Mass not winning this game. It's a game that's very winnable against a team that's really terrible, and they only got to win by three, and they're at home. Now, I know against Temple at home, they played them very tough for the first half. It was up 28-7. They didn't hold the lead. But they played them tough, and I know they played Temple very strong. Uh, no, and uh, there was another team, maybe Toledo. Yeah, it was Toledo and Temple. Uh, Temple only beat them by two, and then uh, and then Toledo was the one where they were up 28-7, and then you know and Toledo's got a very strong defense. So I think UMass at home. I I just I don't see how they don't beat Miami of Ohio. And this is, I'm playing against Miami of Ohio with a good quarterback who should be able to put points on. Uh, take UMass in that one. Uh, Clemson laying 29 over Wake Forest. That, that's way too many points. I don't see how they'll cover that. Wake, as bad as they are, have been playing very competitive. I guess Notre Dame last week, 28-7. to Um... A lot of their games I'm looking at, they don't really get blown out. They they lose by 10. They lose by 14. You can't lay 30 in a conference game. I don't care. You know, Clemson could lay 30 against South Alabama, against North Texas. You can't lay 30 in a conference game. And Wake Forest is still ACC talent, and that spread's way out of hand. That spread shouldn't be more than 14. Uh, again, they're the number one team, which I have. <laughs> I got ten teams that could beat this team. Uh, I don't see how they're number one. Uh, yeah, they beat Notre Dame on a rainy night, but how good is Notre Dame? Uh, how good is any of the teams? Because they don't have a real playoff, so you really don't know. It's all conjecture right now. Um, but I'd look at this game. There's no way Clemson covers 29, 30 points. And that's without the teaser. Uh, just looking at 30, they're, they're, they'll never cover that. Um, Memphis and Temple, I just want to talk about that game. It's a good game. It's a hard game to handicap. Usually you like taking defense over offense, so I would like to take Temple over Memphis. Right now I see this. I see a few evens and a few ones. Um, my initial spread, the teaser king spread, was Temple minus three. Um... I would have taken Memphis as the dog like I did last week against Houston. Memphis is an outstanding road dog, and um, always take him as a road dog. In this situation, however, you've got him as a road favorite. They're just not the same team as a road favorite. Um, so I look at this to be close. Um, I don't know. Temple, I mean, they got a good defense against Penn State, and they beat Cincinnati. So the common passing team Cincinnati they beat I think 27-24 something like that uh, Memphis now off of two losses they had the game against Houston and just their secondary let them down Temple's not a really good throwing team uh, they're one of these strange offensive teams they kind of can run their quarterback is okay he's not a really good quarterback he can run a little bit so they're going to beat you more running uh, Memphis did have problems with Navy but that's a different animal running the ball the triple option and everything. Um, I, I mean, Temple's defense will be tough, but then again, they let up 44 to South Florida, so I don't know if it's as good as, uh, you know, the one that beat Penn State and the one that beat Cincinnati. So I think I'm overrating their defense a little bit. Um, normally, I like the dog in this game. 
uh, at a one or an even, I would probably take Memphis plus the five. As long as you get them over four, uh, I, I think I'd take Memphis because I think they're going to score uh, on Temple, and I don't think Temple's going to hurt their defense because Memphis' weak point is the against the pass, and I just don't see uh, Temple really hurting them. Uh, on the other hand, I can see Memphis should be able to pass the ball on Temple. Um, so I just look at this game. I think it'll be a very close game. It's a very important game. Definitely a playoff game for these uh, these teams. But at this point, I do like. Uh, I think I like Memphis a little bit more. I think the uh, Temple's offense won't hurt Memphis as bad as Memphis's offense should hurt Temple's. Uh, Virginia Lane two to Duke. I, I I like Duke most of the time. Uh, the last two games, Duke got killed. Uh, North Carolina killed them. Uh, I don't know if they recovered from that Miami loss. Normally, this would be a good play to take Duke as an underdog to a weak Virginia team. I probably still like them getting eight. I don't love them, but it, it would be a good play. Um, let's go. Oklahoma State laying one to Baylor. I'm going to focus it on the big games. Um, I've looked at the history of this game, and it's more or less the home team wins. You got a nothing point spread. My nice threat is Oak State minus seven. You can't just replace Seth Russell with this freshman and think it's the same thing. I do like the over. The over under 77 here. I like easing it down to 71. I think makes sense. I think, as you saw, Baylor and Oklahoma was. Uh, when they win 44-34 was a 78. So that means the Baylor will score, and Oak State should score on them. Oak State, I can't figure them out. They give up. They shut down TCU, and they, they struggle against Iowa State. Uh, terrible coaching. That's the only explanation you can have. You can't understand the mismatch and take advantage of it. Um you can score all those points on TCU. You should be able to score them on Iowa State, who's really nothing. Uh, I look for Oklahoma State to win this game. You're laying one. I would take. I would take Oak State in five, but more. I would take over 71. They're not going to shut down Baylor. Um, and I just see it being a high-scoring game like normal. Uh, that's how I see it. Um, Baylor will score. Oak State will score. And it's best to probably go over because, you know, Baylor could easily win this game. But I think Oak State wins it at home. That's been the, the trend of it. And their quarterback's better, although their coach, I was watching the game last week or the week before, and they're driving down the field, and then he changes quarterbacks. And I know he changes the quarterback, but the guy was in such a rhythm. Boom, 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 you know, three, ten, twelve-yard passes in a row, wide open, the guy catches it, and then he pulls the quarterback, and then it's, fumble, it's offsides, it's punt, and you're looking at the court, the coach like, you're an idiot. You're probably, if you don't get a rhythm, you're, you're, you shouldn't be coaching at all, and to keep dicking around with two quarterbacks is just asinine. So I don't like Oklahoma State's coach, but um, basically here at home, I think they get the W. Um, Michigan State, Ohio State, interesting game, spread. Ohio State laying 13, Roughly, maybe 13 and a half, depends where. Um, here's my problem with this game. Connor Cook got hurt last week, hurt his right arm. I watched the play, I watched him. He left the game in the second quarter against uh, Maryland. They win 24 to 7, and you know, their offense couldn't move after he got, he, he was out in the second half. He will play. I'm sure he's still injured. It was a big, it was a pretty good hit. Not one you recover from in a way. He's not 100%. So the question is, if Cook can't go more than two quarters, they're not going to score, which means Ohio State is going to kill them because Ohio State, the secondary of Michigan State is terrible. Michigan State can't run the ball. They have offensive line injuries. Michigan State's a very talented team when healthy. They're a top two or three team. The problem is their offensive line's got injuries. Their secondary Four secondary guys are out. Four starters are out. So you're dealing with two freshmen back there who can't, who doesn't know how to 
look for the ball and intercept it. They just watch the receiver and they watch him catch the ball. I mean, it's it's insane. These guys shouldn't be out there if they can't do that. And I know he's got nothing left. He's on his seventh and eighth, uh, you know, safeties. Um, so if Cook plays all four quarters, it goes over because Cook will score, put up 24 on Ohio State like you did on Michigan, and Ohio State will put up at least 35 on Michigan State because of the secondary, which puts it at about a 69. The over-under is only 52.5, which is a joke. Very, very low. Um, if Cook can't go, Michigan State doesn't score at all. They may, you know, let's say he plays the first quarter and gets re-injured. And believe me, Ohio State's going after him. <laughs> they know the shoulders hurt. Believe me, they're going to, you know, Joey Boza will hit a little bump on him, and they'll sack him like they did to the Virginia Tech guys. So don't kid yourself. They know he's got an injured right arm, and they're going to go after it. So I don't think he'll play the whole game. If he does, he's not going to be like we know how Connor Cook is. He's got to be a little bit hurt from this. Um... Ohio State's going to just pound that secondary. You can't run on Michigan State. You still can't do that. Zico Elliott won't gain much. But Barrett is the key. He'll he'll gain. And I just see this two ways. I, I mean, if Cook is struggling because of his arm, but he still plays, they're not going to score. Take Ohio State late as seven. If you think Cook's going to play and he'll be decent, then you go over... 52 down to 46, which I think is a very low over-under. So if Michigan State's healthy, this is an easy, this is a lock over game. This will go over 46 at halftime. If Cook can't and doesn't, you know, I don't think he's that 100%, but I know he'll play because uh, he's a great quarterback. He should be the first quarterback picked. He's better than Goff at Cal. Uh, he's as good as the Washington State quarterback. Um, I think he's better than the Memphis quarterback. And I think the Western Kentucky quarterback's probably a little better than him. So I'd say the Western Kentucky quarterback's probably the best quarterback I already. Um, but I also like the Memphis and the Washington State quarterback. I don't really like the Cal quarterback. He seems to turn it over too much, and he takes too long to make decisions. He'll be terrible in the pros. Um, TCU, I love their quarterback, and Baylor, I love their quarterback. Boykin, be a high draft pick. He should be. Uh, very accurate, very uh, great passer. So, of course, nobody will draft him because it makes too much sense. Uh, anyway, so I'm leaning towards Ohio State laying seven because I, I just, the Michigan State secondary is terrible, but I also like over 46.5. I think it's a joke in this game. So I think you can play it both ways. Uh, you know, listen, if you hear Cook's not playing or he's something's wrong or, you know, uh, then load up on Ohio State if you think Cook will be playing and yeah, no, he's fine and he's going to go then just pound the over of uh, 46 and a half and if Cook is, you know, 90% it'll hit the over by halftime Michigan State does not have the defense they normally do, nor the offensive line and Ohio State with Barrett this is a game they focus on and this is a game that they they don't they put you away. Ohio State might struggle a little bit with Indiana and, you know, Purdue and Iowa, these teams that, eh, they don't care about. But when they get focused for Alabama, Oregon, Michigan State here, the, the, the Big Ten Championship, then they bow you. They sit there and they pound you and they, until you say uncle, they're not going to sit on the lead. They're going to keep scoring and scoring and scoring. Um, so that's what I see here. They're going to pick on that secondary and I mean, they're going to, you know, they could win by 30 points very easily here. So definitely Ohio State and the over. TCU, Oklahoma, if Boykin plays, we already know the receiver's out. Boykin's hurt. Uh, I don't know what the spread is. My initial spread if Boykin played was Oklahoma minus 7. Um, at this point, I don't know what you're going to get. If Boykin doesn't play, they'll probably be favored by 20, and you take Oklahoma. Uh, you can't play the over on the game because without Boykin, TCU doesn't score. So, I, you know, let's see what happens if Boykin plays. I mean, I didn't think he got hurt all that bad to come out of the game last week, but he's their whole team. Without Boykin, they can't do anything. So Oklahoma wins easy without Boykin. Uh, Michigan, Penn State, Michigan lane four. Um, 
first I liked Michigan, but after looking at them on the road, they had trouble with Minnesota. They had trouble with Indiana. Penn State's a very good home team. Their defenses are good. I, I think the over-under is way too low at 41. I love this game over 35. I mean, Michigan's developed a better passing team now. And they can really, you know, now they're scoring a lot. Where before, they were an under team because they were playing weak offenses. Oregon State, UNLV, uh, teams that really wouldn't put up a lot of points. As soon as they played Michigan State, a good offensive team, they, you know, they start giving up 20 points. And then to give up 20 or 30 to Minnesota, there's no excuse. They're, they're, their offense is terrible. So all of a sudden, you can pass on Michigan. Penn State will pass on them. Penn State's defense is good, but Michigan now knows how to score, and they're running you and passing you, and Harbaugh's bringing in a lot more San Francisco plays. So look for Michigan to score. Um, I, I like the game over. I don't see 35 is nothing. Uh, Michigan will certainly score in the 20s, and Penn State, I got them right there. I think this will be a close game. I like Penn State in the 10, and I like the game over because the over-under is so low at 41. I think that's a joke. So I think I think Penn State at home keeps it close. They could win it. I think Michigan wins it because of Harbaugh. But, again, I think this is a Harbaugh line. I think Penn State should be favored here. Uh, it should be a three-point favorite. Then I would lock Michigan at nine. But at this point, Michigan's a four-point favorite. I can't play Michigan plus two. It doesn't make any sense. Um you know, Penn State's been scoring a lot. They seem to do better at home. So they, the, the one game I looked at to correlate was the Northwestern game. Penn State won that game at Northwestern 23-21. And I think you'll get near the same score here. I think game will be in the 20s, which over 35 is a joke. And then I think Penn State in the 10 is a winner. So like the Michigan State-Ohio State game, it's when you break it down, you could go over and you could – you could take a side, and, um, you know, it's definitely it's free wheel, but I think the over in both games is, is probably the best way to play them, and then Ohio State's a good way, and then I think the dog in the Penn State game. Um, SMU laying three to two lane, over under a 60. Uh, SMU's got a weak record, but they got a pretty explosive offense. Tulane's really bad. I don't think SMU's as bad as Tulane. Um, I just think they're laying three. I took the over 60 out of 54 is the way to go here. SMU scores a lot. They got a pretty good offense. Even though they have like a running quarterback, but he, he scores a lot. Uh, Tulane, I don't know. They're kind of a, they're more of an under team, but they've been scoring lately. They'll score a bunch on SMU uh, just because SMU has really no defense. So I just see this game going over the 60 to go over 54. Um, I don't know, pretty explosive SMU team with no defense. Um, Utah laying two to UCLA. I really wasn't going to play this game because I can't trust UCLA. But then I see Devontae Booker's out, the all-pro running back on Utah, the first running back drafted. And that's huge. He's laying two. Yeah, you heard me. I know the LSU guy's good until he plays a real good defense like Alabama. This guy, Booker, played a good defense in Michigan, and he got over 100 yards. So, um, you know, I, I get that they're peddling the LSU guy, but when he gets into a big game against a good defense, look what happened to him. Chubb ran for 150 yards on Alabama. The, the LSU guy didn't. So I'm just looking at that like, yeah, he's good against the weaker teams, but uh, Booker, uh, yeah, not that he's the better running back, but he's he's a better pro running back, I think. Anyway, Utah Lane 2. I like UCLA in 8 here. Without Booker, uh, that's a major weapon. UCLA got their running back back. Rosen's been playing well. They've been so inconsistent, you don't know what you're getting from UCLA. I can't believe... They got so many injuries, it's really tough. And again, I wasn't going to play this game until I see that Booker's out. With Booker out, Utah, strong defensive team, will we'll definitely miss him. Perkins is back for UCLA. Yeah, they miss Miles Jack. Their defense is not as strong. But I, I think with Rosen, I think this is one of those classic 
you know, close games, whoever scores at the end wins. So I, I think UCLA in eight here. Um, let's go. Uh, all right, last game. Oregon laying four and a half to SC. Um, I've been loving Oregon as the dog. They, they've been a great dog. I appreciate them making me a lot of money as taking them as dogs the last few weeks. Against Washington, I won a lot. Against uh, last week, against uh, against Stanford, they made them a ten-point dog. Are you kidding me? I mean, as long as their quarterback's back, they're not a terrible team. I mean, um, when they got killed, they they were, you know, first of all, they lost to Washington State, who's a very very good team, and they lost to, to Utah, who's even better than Washington State, and they got a lot of returns, but their quarterback wasn't wasn't there. Um, this game I like SC plus the ten and a half, and here's why. Um, when analyzing it, USC hasn't played Oregon in the last two years, but Arizona is a very similar team, similar spread offense, and USC played them very tight. Uh, I think they won one. I don't know if they lost, but it was like a two-point game, a three-point game. So in analyzing that, I think USC, they went to Notre Dame. They lost by ten, you know, Notre Dame, Oregon is about the same. Um, so I just think USC in ten and a half could win the game. They played well against Cal. They played, you know, they they played pretty well lately. Um, I don't see them getting blown out. Uh, they got too much talent for that. It's amazing these coaching changes. It's like you get rid of the drunk coach for a non-drunk coach, and now they're playing better. Um, but Oregon, Oregon's, you know, very good team. Uh, I, I just think in, in this case, because USC matches up well with Arizona, they'll match up well with Oregon. So I like USC in 10 and a half here. The over-under is 72. I, I think that's way too high. Oregon's not going to put up the 50 they usually do. I mean, they're not that type of team yet. But USC, like they played Cal to a like 28-24 game. Uh, they got a good defense. You're not going to play them. You know, this game's not going to get into the 70s. USC's more of an under team. And I just think that this game uh, goes under. If you go to 78, under 78, the teaser, I think you can do it. But I don't really like to play Oregon in an under. So I think the, the better play here is SC plus the 10.5. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, Looking forward to a huge week. Uh, I have one lock going in college, and when I say that, that I lock the team. Let's get this perfectly clear to everybody watching, betting, customers, non-customers. I lock the team. I put the team in two, three, four teasers. I bet it for more. If I put them with another lock, so if it's one lock in college with the lock in the pro, and I put it in the same teaser, and I call the teaser a lock, it's both the teams are locks. If I have a lock team, for example, Alabama last week, if I play them with if I played them with Michigan, but Michigan's not a lock, I don't lock that teaser. Alabama is the lock, but they don't lock the teaser with a non lock team. So when I find two or three locks, I put them together. That's what I've done. You can look at the history every week. It's the same thing. And if you follow the team down you know, if you see Alabama here in a lock with Michigan, with uh, whoever I locked in Notre Dame last week, and then you see Alabama with Michigan, but it doesn't say lock on it, well, it doesn't mean Alabama, they're the lock team, but I'm playing them in multiple teasers to take advantage that I found this game that I love and it should win. And that's Alabama laying one to Mississippi State. There was no way they were going to lose. There's no way. They weren't going to cover the one. That's why I lock it. That's the whole point of the lock is you see a game that you go, oh, oh, that's for sure going to win. And I got 99% for sure that they're going to win, and they win. And that's what I'm doing. But, I'm, but if I'm so sure they're going to win, and I can find another game where I'm very sure they're going to win, I put them together, and I call it a lock teaser. But both the teams in the lock teaser are locks, and both of them will be played with other teams. And not all necessarily every time I put them in a teaser, 
it's a lock teaser because the other team might not, I might like the other team, I want to play them, you know, like this week. So let's say I locked USC, and I didn't, but let's say I locked USC, and I played them with, with the over in the Penn State game. And I lock it. And I said, here's the lock. And then I play USC with the over in the Michigan State game. Well, the over in the Michigan State game, but I don't call the lock. Well, because I like the over in the Michigan State game, but I don't, you know, eh, I've got to be careful with it. I don't want to bet too much on it, but USC's the lock. So now they're with they're with the Penn State Michigan over. That's a lock. And then I'm going to say, well, but I like I love USC, so now I'm going to play them with the over in the MSU Ohio State game. But you know, I don't love that as much because I'm not sure about Cook, so I'm going to play that one. But I'm going to play it smaller, and I'm not going to call it a lock. USC still the lock as would be the Penn State Michigan over. That would be the two locks. So when you see them in the same teaser, that's the two locks. And then as I play each of the lock with other teams, because I want to take advantage that I found this game that going, they're going to win for sure. So then I'm going to put them in two, three teasers. But the other team might not be, I, I might like the game and I want to play it, but I don't love it. You know, there's the injury factor. So, like Baylor, they got the freshman quarterback. So, eh, I'm not, you know, I, I like Baylor, but I don't love it because I don't know how good the quarterback is. So, therefore, I'll play it smaller. But, hey, I might as well play it with the lock that I like, USC. So, that's the method to the madness. It's just simply playing, finding that lock team and playing it in two, three teasers. The lock teaser are when I have, when both the teams are locks, and I'll play them together because I'll play them for more money. But I want to take advantage that I found the lock, and I'll play them in two, three teasers. So that that's the whole idea of it, um, and that's that's what I'm trying to do here. So that's when I say my locks are 25 and one. That's the lock. The lock is last week. Alabama was the lock, so now it's 26 and one. That's how that's how I come up with that. But I'm playing Alabama in three teasers, so I'm more than 26 and one in my lock. In my lock teasers, I may be 25 and one, but I think I'm more than that. But the lock, play, the lock team is 25 and one. But since I'm playing them in three teasers, I'm probably 60 or 75 and, and one. Uh, you know, I might have lost the other half of them a little bit, but generally, when I'm saying 25 and one, it's 25 of the the 25 teams. So when I go five and zero. Oh, the five teams that I locked all won. So when I went from 20 and one to 25 and one, I'm not calling the five teasers that I won. I'm calling the five teams. I won a lot more than five teasers. So that's what I'm doing. So it's up to like 28 and three now. Um, I had five locks last week and I won three of them. Uh, one, no, I won one, two, three. I won four. I had six locks. I went four and two. So theoretically, I'm 29 and three. Um, it's just, you know, I'm really focused in on that. Anyway, so that's what's happening. So when you hear my me calling the lock or whatever, and I'm putting it in, the lock is the team. So when you see the lock, when you buy from me and you, you buy my locks, and you see the two teams, you see Alabama and you see... Uh, Arizona Cardinals in a, in a lock. Both the teams are locked. You should play them in multiple teasers. Uh, and that's the best way to make money. That's how I make uh, a ton of money. And then you, I put all the locks in a, in a 516 teaser. So I do that too. And then I get odds. And I, I don't need to bet a lot. And I, and I get a nice return. Alright everybody. www.teaserking.com um, Red Hot. we got two more weeks of college. And then the Bulls. And uh, I'll be right back with the pros. All right, have a great week. Good luck to you. Uh, and take care.